I know it sounds like an incredibly niche topic, but I promise you springs have a lot to teach you. Especially if you're new to differential equations. They serve as the best introduction to linear ODEs, and later on when we introduce the driving force, introduce concepts like resonance and the Fourier series. The story of springs originates with Robert Hooke, where he derived a relationship between the force exerted by the spring and the position relative to the spring's resting length. He found it to be linear, meaning if you stretch out the spring by twice the distance, the force exerted by the spring also doubles. The K is known as the spring constant, and it has units of newtons per meter. It corresponds to how strong the spring is. So I'm going to use my magical foresight and rewrite it like this. This omega has units of 1 over seconds. Not coincidentally, it is the units of frequency. So this right here is probably the most fundamental differential equation you'll ever know, and there is no systematic way of approaching this problem other than just guessing the form. However, we don't say guessing, we say ansatz because mathematicians like to sound smarter. This ansatz isn't without motivation though. You can see here that we have the derivative of something being proportional to itself, so the form will probably be exponential. So by plugging our ansatz into the equation, we see that indeed the exponentials cancel out and we derive this auxiliary equation. Because there is a lambda that satisfies this auxiliary equation, it confirms our initial guess. And what we get is that x is equal to a complex exponential. Which certainly seems wrong, right? Because clearly the spring is oscillatory in nature and exponential just grows or decays. Also, our answer is complex, which certainly makes even less sense. But for the sake of argument, let us continue on and see if we can derive a meaningful result from this. You can check that if we attach an arbitrary constant to this exponential, that it still satisfies the differential equation. You may have also noticed an ambiguity with the sign, and both these solutions satisfy the differential equation just fine, so which one is correct? Well, let me introduce you to... Okay, turn off the music. Enough trauma, alright? Enough trauma. We're good. We don't need that. Alright. Actually, in order for something to be linear, it also has to satisfy this property. This is why we can attach the arbitrary constants, because both of these solutions are valid solutions. So 2 is the combination. Therefore, we have the general solution, because it contains every possible solution. It is time to put this in its final form. The complex solution isn't so convenient to work with because you need to choose appropriate complex coefficients to guarantee a real result. Let's expand this using Euler's formula. Now we can define new coefficients and restrict them to be real. This is valid because you can create any real number using proper complex values of C1 and C2. This is it, the final solution. You may ask, what the hell was the point of everything before? Couldn't we have just guessed sinusoidal solutions? Absolutely yes, you are correct. However, we are going to be generalizing our spring even further, and to do that, we have to use all the tools we just developed in this video. So that was the point, that was the, the whole point of the video, serve as an introduction to further generalizations of the spring.